Hi, and thank you all for joining us today for our third Acclaim Quick Hits presentation. I'm John Toby, and I would like to welcome you all to the Acclaim Lighting Showroom at our headquarter facilities in Los Angeles, California. Uh, today we are live, and the Q&A module on the Zoom window is open. Please use it to submit any questions you might have. Um, I'll try to get to them live as they come in. Um, if not, I've got kind of an acclaimed brain trust over here who's going to help me answer them at the end of the show. Um, in all my product presentations, even the virtual variety, I like to give a general history and background on Acclaim Lighting, the brand and its product offering. Uh, we have been designing and producing specification grade LEDs for nearly 20 years. Um, over that time, we focused the line on some primary fixture types, including linear grays and cove, high performance floods, direct view, low voltage fixtures with proprietary drivers, and DMX control solutions. In every fixture family, Acclaim offers a typical white light LED or a color changing DMX controlled solution. And today, the main event, what we're here and excited to share with you all is a new expansion offering for our flood fixtures, uh, the Outdoor Link System. This new specification option creates a simple twist lock connector solution for joining individual flood fixtures in series from a single wired point connection. So uh, this style of connection isn't new. Um, we're often very familiar with it with linear product where we have a feed cable that has AC power and DMX running to it. And then we have our bars linked end to end, or maybe we have link cables in between them to navigate a turn or obstruction or add some space between two fixtures. Okay. Uh, the OLS or outdoor link system incorporates this daisy chaining format but it's specifically designed for point source fixtures. So let's dive into the components. How are we going to make this work? Okay. Uh, so the pieces and parts um, that get this thing going, it all starts with a junction box. For with outdoor link system, Acclaim is introducing our own junction box, the AJ box one or Acclaim junction box one. This piece is designed to receive individual conduits carrying AC and DMX. You can see I've got two separate wires and two separate conduit knockouts here. Um, and then wiring them to a single um, composite feed cable that carries both signal and AC. Uh, AJ Box 1, it's a typical 4 inch round. This is weather tight, so it is meant to go outside. Um, and in addition to uh, the weather tight construction, we've added simple terminals inside the box that are labeled to make things uh, easy and offer great clarity for our electrical contractors. And we've got our uh, the voltage barrier you can see in the graphic as well as surge protection on the AC side. Uh, leaving the AJ box is going to be the Acclaim provided OLS cables. These are heavy duty composite wires that have conductors for both AC power and DMX. Our cable is 600 volt rated and is NEC, that's the National Electric Code compliant, um, for a hybrid cable. So this allows us to have both signal wires and AC in the same cable. Um, the standard finish is gray and we're doing black twist and lock connectors. Feed cables are available in um, lengths of 1 foot, 10 foot, 25 foot or 50 foot. These are fixed lengths. Obviously you can cut them down at your junction box if you like. And opposite the feed cable is the end cap. Um, the OLS end cap must always be used to terminate a line. It is the opposite of the feed cable. Link cables are similar in material to feed cables as far as construction and detailing, um, except that they are finished with male and female twist lock connectors instead of bare wire on a single end. Um, they also come in one foot, five foot, 10 foot, 25 foot, and 50 foot specified lengths. And these are fixed. We cannot adjust them. It's part of the, the listing, the UL approval on the system. Um, but you can join them together, right? So say we need 16 feet of link cable, we can do a 10 footer, a five footer, and a one footer and join them all together, okay? To locate a fixture position on the line, 
the Outdoor Link System T is installed. And this is probably the most important and integral piece of the system. Um, in practice, this T replaces what would be a typical wire junction box to connect a fixture, okay? The OLST provides that simple twist and lock connection to bring power and AC to the fixture, where traditionally we would be looking at some sort of junction box or hardwire connection, okay? Um, the T has male-female links uh, for through connection. That's for feed cable in, link cable in out, end caps, um, and then the branch for linking a fixture. It's really important to clarify that the outdoor link system is designed for a continuous line of fixtures, no Y splicing or branching. So this can't go in two directions. We have a continuous line with fixtures that branch off of a particular T. Current fixtures that are applicable for OLS specification and use include our Dynadrum series. Um, so we have all sizes, the EO, midsize SO, the big HO, as well as our Dyna Accent and Dyna Accent Mini, the little mini bullet. Um, these fixtures can be specified with a traditional hard wire, right, for bare wires for the contractor to connect, or the outdoor link system plug end, okay? Um, so let's take a look at what this actually means um, for potential labor savings and between connecting wires or using the outdoor link system, okay? So, you know, let's look at these bare wires first. And this is a traditional method for any DMX-enabled fixture, right? You're gonna be looking at connecting AC power. You know, this is what your contractor is up to. He's gonna be wiring these in some sort of junction box, and then they're gonna be wiring DMX in and out connections in a junction box, right? So we're up to three for power, five for DMX. That's eight wire splices at any given fixture. And this is a typical standard. Um, so let's assume we've got an application that we want to update with an OLS option, okay? Um, I'm gonna just use a 10 fixtures. Maybe it's a colonnade. We got 10 columns, we wanna light them up. So instead of wiring each fixture in its own unique junction box, that is a potential point of failure with eight potential points of failure, um, we're going to wire one junction box. This guy has got six wire connections for the electrician, three for power, three for DMX. That's six in total. Versus wiring 10 fixtures like this, we're talking about taking the wire connections from 80 to six. So, and the efficiency of this OLS system gets multiplied at scale, right? For example, and this, take that difficult, typical detail of 10 fixtures, maybe we were repeating it 10 times. You know, we're talking about a pretty large job now, um, around 100 fixtures. Using the OLS system is going to reduce 800 wire connections down to 60. And that's assuming that we are only linking 10 fixtures on a single line. What if even more fixtures are linked in series? What if we've got 20 or 30 on our feed cable line, right? We're talking about being able to wire 100 fixtures with 20 wires, 20 bare wire connections. I guess, wait, let me do the math, 666. 24 bare wire connections, right? 800 to 24, that's massive labor savings and also a massive um, update in terms of failure points, right? Um, so we're really trying to improve that. Um, and the entire system, it really does link with ease and I can demonstrate it for you guys now. Um, so we have our feed cable, we're going to connect it to a T, okay? Uh, let me get my first fixture on here. There we go, adding a link cable, check. All right, I got another fixture here. We're gonna go for our second T. And you know, we're doing best practices. We gotta make sure we get our end cap there on the end for termination. And voila, it's done. I just connected two fixtures. That was all of 20 seconds, right? I think, is anybody timing me? <laughs> um, and you know, the, I guess the question becomes, how many fixtures can we link on a continuous line? I just did two, okay? This is my bare wire, we don't have time for that. Um, the calculation of quantity is all based on electrical load and voltage. A claim allows for a max of 15 amps to be connected on an OLS line. 
Larger fixtures have a more substantial electrical load, so this can limit the amount that can be interconnected. So if you look at the chart here, our large Dynadrum HO, that's a 250 watt fixture. So that is a limiting factor um, on a 15 amp line. All the claim fixtures that are compatible with OLS are universal line voltage. So they can be connected to 120, 277, or 240 for those international folks with us. Higher voltage allows for more fixtures. Again, I want to refer to the chart. You can see um, top line there, Dynadrum HO, that's our large 250 watt fixture. At 120 volt, we can link seven fixtures. At 277, that increases to 16. Um, also note the far right column there. Um, at 120, our max cable run, that's from AJ box one to last fixture in line, is limited to 150 feet. At 277, we can run 350 feet of cable through all of our fixtures to our last one in series. In addition to saving substantially on installation labor, and I can't stress this enough, we talked about it earlier um, with the wire splicing, um, long-term maintenance of a fixture system using the outdoor link system is incredibly simple and really prevents one bad fixture from having negative effects on those around it or downstream from it. Um, so this is my simple setup. I've got two fixtures connected on my outdoor link system feed, um, but let's imagine that this fixture has a bad power supply, or maybe it's a logic board, maybe the LEDs burn out, right? Whatever, it failed for some reason, you know, we know that this happens. But if it does fail, it's not gonna affect the fixture downstream. It can simply be removed and replaced, okay? So I'm going to disconnect it. My bad fixture, pretend she's working, right? My downstream fixture is still functioning perfectly fine, right? And then I go to the process. I've got my new product. It's addressed correctly for my DMX control program. I'm just going to link it right back on. And I'll give it a second to boot up. And this fixture is just going to respond perfectly um, back to the program that we're running. You see the little color change action there. Ready to go, right? Um, all very slick. <laughs> um, the next question, you know, that we often come face, find ourselves addressing um, is what projects or what applications are, does this OLS system offer the greatest advantage and where might it be slightly problematic? And I think it's important to uh, dive into this and discuss it a little bit more in depth. Um, so in general, uh, OLS projects are meant for lighting applications with more than one fixture, right? Ideally, we're talking about a grouping um, or a regimented spacing or something, something that can utilize either linking a bunch together or that linking in series down the line. OLS is going to offer major advantages when it comes, when it can be used in applications that are essentially unoccupied or not accessible by the general public. Um, examples might be roadway piers, bridge truss work, building or tower ledges, roof structures. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about mechanical spaces, right? Things that are for maintenance or construction, okay? Um, locating these twist and lock connectors along a pedestrian path or installing raw unprotected cable um, in uh, you know, the path of landscaping equipment or tools, now, that might not be the best choice, right? Because these can be impacted, these can be fiddled with, you know, oh, blue connector, what does that do? You know, it's pretty easy to operate. Um, so, you know, what do we do in those conditions? Um, maybe we want to encase the cable and conduit for an additional layer of protection, okay? Um, even in those situations where you want to protect this equipment, it still has such potential to save costs because we're eliminating all of those wire connections and all of that labor for the electricians. Um, cables and connectors will easily chase through an inch and a half conduit. And T's, uh, T's connecting fixtures or excess link cable, honestly, it can just be coiled in a secure box, right? Um, I'm not talking about weather type NEMA enclosures or something, you know, some special rating just a box, something that offers security for these components and these connectors, okay? Um, all components of the outdoor link system, all of our connectors, all the cables, they're already weather tight. They're IP67. Um, putting them in so, some sort of weather enclosure isn't gonna help that at all. Um, we just might want a little additional security. 
So uh, going forward, um, we definitely encourage um, opening discussions for new project applications with our internal acclaim staff um, and or your local acclaim sales representatives. A um, lot of things out there where this can be an, a major advantage um, to what exists on the market currently. Um, so we want to thank you all for joining us and giving us some of your time today. Um, stay safe, stay warm out there, everybody. Um, we're going to get to some of this Q&A and have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.